Hello everyone, and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to talk about Tokamak. Now the Tokamak platform has seen a ton of hype lately. The project is valued over $7 billion fully diluted, and I wanna explain how the project works and tell you a bit about whether that hype is justified or not. Now Tokamak is designed to optimize liquidity for constant product AMM, so that means Uniswap V2 and its forks like SushiSwap. So essentially what happens with Tokamak is the platform locks up a ton of ETH and USDC tokens, which are basically the base tokens that any pool can be built off of. People deposit ETH in USDC USDC for this APR paid out in TOKE, and the TOKE token is then staked to direct liquidity to the ETH and USDC pools. Now if we scroll down here, I'm just going to use FXS or Frax's governance token as an example. Essentially when the protocol was fully deployed, anyone that is staking TOKE could actually vote for this FXS pool to receive all of the liquidity from say ETH or USDC or some small portion of it. Now let's just say I want to provide ETH FXS liquidity. So I lock up all of my token this platform. I'm receiving a 62% or so APR and I'm voting all of my weight that FXS gets paired with ETH. Now, based on the proportion of stake token that agrees with me, that's how much of the share of ETH FXS will get for the liquidity pair. Now, in addition to that, as a liquidity director, as they call it, TOKE stakers get to decide where that liquidity is deployed, and right now that's SushiSwap or Uniswap V2. So there are a couple benefits to the way Tokamak is designed, and they are as follows. The first is that impermanent loss is kind of pushed off to the protocol and TOKE holders. So if you're just single staking FXS or ETH or USDC or any of these other governance tokens, you're not going to be held responsible for any impermanent loss that the pool sees. Now, if you're curious on how the guardrails for impermanent loss works, I will include a link below for you to read the full description. The high level explanation is the protocol is going to be getting a ton of protocol controlled assets from LP fees, and it's going to use that as a backstop for IL. In addition, if that's not sufficient, TOKE stakers themselves will be held liable for that IL and they'll have to pay it out on the vault stakers behalf. What that means is if you, the end user, want to stake ETH or FXS, you can do so without worrying about IL. So it really is a true single staking product. Now, of course, in addition to everything we've talked about, there are a few other things you can do on Tokamak. So you can see there's a Sushi and Uni LP pool where Toke is paired with ETH. So that's an option for you, and it looks like it's paying out about a 234% APR. Now, in addition, if we scroll down, you can see there are other single-sided deposits available to you other than just FXS. So it looks like they have about four live now with SushiSwap coming live soon. Now, another interesting mechanism which they've enabled is called Core. And you can see here, pretty much all of the core DeFi products have their governance tokens listed. So what Tokamak is essentially doing is they're advertising to other protocols and governance token holders that they can actually vote to have their governance token included on Tokamak to generate a ton of liquidity for that token. So in the first round of votes, you can see Frax, Alchemex, TracerDAO, Olympus, and Sushi1. But in the next round of voting, you can see that there's going to be many more assets supported and brought onto Tokamak. This is a good mechanism in my opinion because it essentially means that some of these other projects like let's just say rune are going to want to accrue the toka token so they can vote to have their rune token supported by tokamak now this could create a lot of buying pressure on the toka token and we could also see something like what curve does where uh, other projects can actually bribe curve holders to vote to support their projects uh, liquidity mining incentives so theoretically let's just say rune token holders wanted a tokamak pool they could then bribe TOKE holders to vote to have Rune included on the next round of core reactors. So if we look on the CoinGecko page here for Tokamak, we can see that the market pretty much agrees. You can see here the fully diluted valuation is over $7 billion, which is pretty crazy. And you can see that if we look at the price chart, it's been pretty much up only. This is in stark contrast to most DeFi tokens, which are traditionally down only to ETH. And if we put on the ETH comparison here, you can see it's also done well against ETH, which is quite impressive. So I've talked a lot about the bull case for Tokamak, but what are some of the downsides? Well, the first and very important downside is that Tokamak is built on the constant product model, which again is a Uniswap V2 and a SushiSwap type AMM. 
Now we pretty much already know these constant product AMMs are not going to be the future. Uniswap V3's concentrated liquidity is much more efficient, and we're also seeing perpetual products like DYDX and GMX come online, which are also more efficient than V2 style AMMs. Now this is pretty much a known thing. These V2 style AMMs are not going to be around long term, and it's possible that this could just be a stepping stone for Tokamak. So maybe they can succeed over the next few months or even year with SushiSwap and Uni V2, but in the future they're going to have to transition to concentrated liquidity on Uni V3 or another solution. I haven't read anything that suggests they're working on that, but I do think it's going to be very important for the protocol's long-term future. Now the other glaring problem for Tokamak that they're going to have to figure out a solution for is the protocol pretty much revolves around TOKA token inflation. Tokamak is essentially taking the burden of rewarding liquidity providers and doing it all themselves. What that means is TOKA holders are getting diluted with all of this TOKA token inflation that's getting paid to reward liquidity providers. I personally don't think that's a long-term healthy model, and I don't think the LP fees and governance rights are going to make up for it. Now, as you all know, I love looking at on-chain metrics for governance tokens, so we're on Nansen right now, and you can see that unique addresses for, to for this token has gone up over time, which has been a nice steady increase. One thing I will say about this data, though, is that pretty much anyone that holds the TOKA token has staked it on the platform just because they're single staking and you're getting a pretty good yield there, so very few people are actually just holding this token in their wallet. What that means is that on the surface, it's pretty difficult to look at the analytics on Nansen and try to come to a conclusion, uh, but you can see we're on the notable wallets tab here. And it is worth noting that if we look at the top balance changes over the last seven days, there's very little selling activity. Now, one thing I would recommend if you hold a large position of the TOKA token is to actually put smart alerts on for the TOKA staking pool. You can set up telegram alerts to get notified whenever someone pulls out, let's just say $10 million from this pool, and then you can track their address to see if they're selling it or doing something else with the tokens. Again, if you want to try out Nansen yourself, there's going to be a trial link in the description below. So I know we covered a lot there, but I think Tokamak is a pretty innovative project. That said, I do think they will have challenges protecting the value of the Toka token, and I also think that they need to find a way to support concentrated liquidity. These constant product AMMs aren't going to be around forever, even if Tokamak can supply a ton of liquidity there, so I think they're going to have to find a way to support concentrated liquidity. With that said, I want to thank you all so much for watching. Please like the video if you can, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.